Welcome to the Shooting Show. This week we're heading back up to southwest Scotland for a stalking experience with Chris Dalton. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. a new machine up, I'll talk about that a little bit later on, but um, this is the ideal bit of kit for the hill, just come in light. Normally there's reds just on the top of the hill up here, so we've pulled in nice and quiet to get set up. We're going to work up the track and see if we can get some reds along the, along the tree line. Um, woodland recreation again here, looking at regen, so this is an area I've got to concentrate on. Coming to the end of the, of the hinds now, so we're looking at calves, yearlings, maybe some old, anything old, genuine sort of cull animals. We've seen a couple of row down here on the way in, but I'm not interested in row really. We want to try and get some reds off, so that's the plan for this morning. I've got a six and a half brown in with us this morning. Standard bit of kit these days. Right, we'll get off and see if we can find anything. to get her to make sure that she's steady to the shot. Stay. Good girl. Good girl. Okay, that's what I needed to do after shooting. I needed to sit down and just wait calmly. I don't want her burying about me. She's young, she's keen. She's really wanting to go and recover that. This is where the steadiness starts and this is one of the things I can't do with clients so it's important to try and get her out more and more now when I'm on my own and get that steadiness instilled in her. Um, we shot a roll last night and she was she was off. I've got to get her to stop that. I don't want to discourage the enthusiasm for the hunt but I just want the steadiness as well. So this is where it's important. This is a crucial time now in her training. The reason we've shot that is we've got a woodland regen here not a particularly good stag so we're shooting under the general license at the moment um, selective culling it's a decent animal but the head's not so good on it so we're selecting we take that one out from this area which is going to be kind of trying to get the uh, the native woodland to re recreate over the next sort of 10 to 15 years Okay, interesting thing, a pretty crappy stag, a decent body weight, but we've definitely got evidence of a metatarsal there, so there's a little bit of seeker in here, which is the first I've seen on this hill, to be fair, but definitely the evidence of a metatarsal on the hock. And if you look at the antler, it's a little bit, little bit seeker-like on the tips here, so we've got a bit of seeker blood in here, and that's the first one I've seen on here. Although there are seeker, uh, a few seeker kind of not in, in the locale, but not many, so that's a, that's a first. Uh, anyway, we'll get him... We're getting growlicked and fortunately with a downhill drag um, down to the car so we'll get the safety aspect covered. Browning, 
Uh, again, 6.5 standard weapon I use these days. It's absolutely perfect for hill work. Lovely, accurate rifle. I mean, that shot was probably 95, 100 yards off the sticks and straight through the neck. Um, deer never felt a thing, so you've got to have confidence in your, in your kit. It looks to me like an old bullet wound, possibly, here. Um, the bone's extruded from the back and healed. You've got quite a nasty lump there. I mean, the deer's in reasonably good, well, it's in good condition, actually, but it just shows you. But obviously, uh, evidence of a, an old injury, I, I would suspect that looks to me like a, a shot. Somebody's pulled, gone low and, and gone through there, but it just shows you how re resilient these beasts are because, you know, good body weight and obviously not too inconvenienced by that and body weight and what have you is down for what I would suspect for on here because it's really good feeding they've got access to pasture down here so it's not exactly hard for them but that's in all respects a good animal to take off the hill I'm testing the the Emberleaf knives which I've had for a while now absolutely super bit of kit um, nice sheath all engraved which is a real nice touch this is the Garen um, probably the workhouse of the Emberleaf range handiness of, of having a a long blade is this on a big deer you can get right into the uh, thoracic area you can you know get the, the knife through the top of the sternum um, right into the, the major blood vessels and really open everything up and you can see just how effective that is textbook stuff start the cooling process prevent the uh, or reduce and slow down the bacterial growth and we're going to growl it straight away We've moved the stag away from the, the bleed area again, just for keep it nice and clean on clean, a clean bit of ground. So that's just helping cleaning him up. Um, one of the advantages of a bright orange handle, you don't want to be leaving expensive life, knives around, lying around on the hill. So I can clear, even I can see that. Um, so what we're going to do is try to get him nicely laid on his back. So we've got a good area to work. Unzip him. So be careful when you manoeuvring big stags around, there's a bit of weight, although we have them a lot bigger on here than these, boy. That's perfect now, got a real good position. You see the bleed hole, shots here as well. Yeah, just in there, so right on, it's lucky, that's what I was aiming. Um, so we're gonna just basically unzip him, top of penis up to, up to the top of the sternum here. Um, that keeps that body incision as small as possible. We'll knot the esophagus, pull that back through, knot the anus, pull that back through, and roll everything out. Two fingers there, you need, need this with a sharp knife, keep your fingers out of the way, and basically blade goes in. Two, two fingers are just guiding it. Now I can really get my hand in there, lift the um, flesh away from the stomach, and very slowly, nicely just nick up, just watching, I don't nick anything with that. Well, what we're going to do now is have a look at the, I've got the Gralic. Um, TB, the most likely disease, so we're looking at the mesenteric lymph node chain on the intestine, which is a ring, if you can see, for Pastor Zosher, who's having an early morning breakfast. But there's the mesenteric lymph nodes. We're looking for swollen, enlarged, pussy, gritty to touch. I mean, they're actually perfect. Here's the liver. We're going to look for any evidence of any liver fluke, which clearly is a non nice liver. And there we have the portal lymph node. Not swollen, not enlarged again. TB indicator eliminated. Healthy animal. Everything about this animal is healthy, apart from the fact it looks as though somebody shot it through the front leg, but uh, through the back leg, sorry, but recovered quite well from that. So. Nice and neat, bled out, cooling. We won't do anything else now. Rope on, I'll probably get hold of the antlers actually on this, and we're going down that way, back to the track. We'll get back down to the track, into the vehicle, into the uh, ATV, back into the larder, and we'll do the rest of it in there. Right, we can get the bike up to here, so that'll be a good job. We've got the Argo for use back at home, but for up here on the hill, this is absolutely perfect. Uh, big tray on the back, we get three or four reds on here. Um, you know, you can manage on your own to get the, the deer into the tray. So, essential piece of kit for this sort of sort of ground. If we're out on the hill, we can get I can get pretty much to anywhere part of the estate within reason on, on this machine. Fairly manoeuvrable on the roads as well, so uh, really essential bit of kit.
and we'll get all the kit loaded up and that's us back to the larder. The main reason we came up, really one of the main reasons, was to pick up the new machine. So we got a new um, Outlander with a, like an Outrider wheel with an eighth wheel which gives the machine more stability for on the open hill. So I was actually picking that up because I picked that up from kind of halfway between home and and the estate so that was quite convenient and we're going to on the way back now we're picking up the Argo which has just been in for service so we're actually in a day and a half done done an awful lot um, got a little Zosh with me today she's really having to step up to the mark now and learn a trade you can see this morning the benefit of a dog with her indicating because after we'd shot the red she was she was giving us a steer that there were there were more deer coming just above us so she did very well actually. She's got most of, she's most of nearly where I wanted to be, but there's still a bit of steadiness issue. She ran in a little bit this morning after shot. Just excitement and keenness. I've got to stop her doing that. So just work a bit more on the steadiness side of the house. But to be honest with you, she's still a lot of pup in her. Um, I'm sure we can get that sorted out. I'd rather have a keen and interested in deer than just some kind of muppet that sits by my side all day and never really does anything. So. She's certainly got character and spirit, and there's the odd swear word appears frequently in my vocabulary whilst I'm speaking to her when she misbehaves, but no, she's doing all right, really. She's, she's turning into a good little dog, so all in all, a good day and a half. Okay. Chris Dalton there doing things his way. And now it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Alfie Tibbles was crowned overall high gun at the British Schools and Young Shots Championship. On a sun soaked day at Sporting Targets, Alfie shot 48 on the red course to take the overall title by just one target. Having won the under 14s course last year, Alfie showed he's a name to watch in the future. And watch out for Steph Meekin too, she was individual ladies champ this year. Stay tuned to the Clay Shooting website for the full results. Shooting organisations say shoots need to do all they can to protect curlews in the UK. It was World Curlew Day at the weekend and Basque and the GWCT called attention to the decline of breeding populations, with the wader now listed as globally near-threatened. If you want to help, all you need to do is count the curlew you see between now and July, make a note and share the knowledge. Basque has a dedicated curlew webpage that's being used to build a bigger picture. When it comes to generating revenue for conservation, one hunter could be worth more than 1,500 photo tourists. One reserve in the Greater Kruger area analysed its figures and found that 46 visiting hunters brought more money to the park than 24,000 non-hunters. In other words, a hunter is 1,565 times more valuable. The reserve ended up increasing their conservation fees to account for the large carbon and resource use associated with huge numbers of photo tourists. And finally, with just 20 days until the Northern Shooting Show, make sure you save money on tickets while you still can. Early bird tickets are still available on the website. At £12 for an adult day ticket, they're cheaper than what you pay on the gate. Plus you get to beat the queues on the day. Find out about everything that's on at the Northern Shooting Show at northernshootingshow.co.uk. That was the Shooting Show News. Well that's it for this week, thanks for watching, please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show. <laughs>